Main topic of the night. California woman who stabbed her boyfriend over 108 times, sentenced, only sentenced to probation and community service. This came in from uh, people.com. Are you familiar with, with this story about, about what went down? Because this has been blowing up all over. Yeah, I've seen some stuff of it. I mean, I know just from what I know off of the information I've received offline, but um, it, I'm struggling with this concept of her not getting any jail time mm -hmm. because he called it a psychosis right. from weed. And as much as I understand that that's a real thing that can happen, I do not think that that takes away your responsibility of your actions because you chose to do the drug. Right. And even though you may have not known about the reaction, just like you, if you chose to drink and say you have zero tolerance and one drink, even though it's not against the legal limit, one drink makes you impaired and you drive, you're still responsible for killing someone if you get in a car accident. Even though your blood alcohol content would have been below the legal limit. Right. You still drove after drinking and that makes you responsible for that person, you know, other people's lives when you make an impaired decision. I don't know. I just, and yet I also understand the whole concept of her maybe not knowing that this was her reaction and that in the, one of the arguments was that her, the guy who died, the guy she killed, was the one that like had her take the last hit. Yeah. And and I was like, she still has a choice. She doesn't well, she wasn't being forced to do weed. Right. And they say that uh so her defense, I was looking into the um into the into the facts of it, or her defense was uh, the actions were the result of a cannabis-induced psychosis, is what it was called. A cannabis-induced mm -hmm. psychosis. And she was not faking her behavior on that day. This was an, an expert came in to the court because she was, what, found guilty. I think they reduced the charges to, like, from murder to manslaughter and things like that. Yeah. And which, which I understand, even, even with drunk driving, I would, I would think. Because, you know, even a, even a person who drinks and drives... They don't. They don't tell themselves, "I'm gonna, t I'm gonna pound a ninety of these beers and I'm gonna go out there and hit somebody." Like they don't. You don't. You're not doing that. You're not. It's not an intent to unalive somebody. But one hundred percent, what you said, I, I agree. You have to take uh, responsibility uh, of it. Oh, and I'm gonna put both of us on screen. I forgot that we have a. I have a double screen. But you have to take responsibility, and. That's where there, I look. I did the research on it. I forgot. I think his name was Alan. I forgot his last name. It's a man in uh, in Mississippi. But it's a, a black man in Mississippi, first name Alan. You Google it. He is in jail for life for just possession of marijuana. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's like, I, I and I'm gonna okay now. I'm gonna share something. I think I've shared this story on this channel before, but. It's very it's serious. And this, this exact same similar scenario happened in my family. My uncle, or my favorite uncle on my father's side. And it's very sad. My, my grandmother on my father's side has is, is lived a very tough life. I mean, she's a, she's a cancer survivor, and all three of her sons have all been, have all died. Uh, my father being the, la the latest one, the first two died by a gun. The uncle, the, the, the youngest that are the one that I'm talking about, that had this very similar story. Um, when it was told to me, my uncle, his name was Nathan, that my, uh, it was told to be my family member that my uncle Nathan had passed. And when the whole story was revealed to me, it was, he was uh, with his girlfriend. They were doing a drug. It wasn't marijuana. It was a different drug. I forgot which drug they said, but it, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it was. I, it was some kind of a hallucination. Stronger than, definitely stronger than marijuana. I don't think it was cocaine or anything. I think it was um, some kind of, uh, one, of the, one of the other stronger drugs. And they were doing that together. And then he had, according to him, he, he, he reacted to it very badly. And he throttled her to death, thinking that she was somebody else. Or yeah. something else. She, he, she had a, and he was uh, he was arrested. And when he when he gave his side of the story, he said he he said um, that wasn't his defense. It, it was 
especially when my grandmother questioned him. What he said that somebody must have broken into the house and did, when and after he had passed out and and did it. But you know, after the you know, he was released from from uh, to to let the investigation go on. The poli the report came back that you know there was no sign of a break in. There was nothing else. That, it was only you two in the house. This this you this had to have been done based on you know what the, the, the drugs yeah. that you were taking. But he was so sure and afraid of you know going to prison. He he was so sure he wasn't he he just I guess he just felt like there there is no defense for this. I'm not I mean a drunk driver like you said a drunk driver uh, you're still going to face the consequences most nine times out of ten. And the fact that it was a girlfriend that he was dating probably about to uh, I think they were engaged to be married and, and the guilt uh, of that. And while he was um, out on on bail or being released during the investigation, the second he heard that the warrant was out for his arrest, like no, we we concluded our investigation. You're going, you're going to get arrested for her death, for manslaughter or murder or whatever it was. And he he disappeared for a couple of days. They couldn't find him. And the friend that he whose house he he hid in. He took that. He, see, he he locked himself in the room. Took the took his uh, his weapon his, and and he ended himself because he already knew that there was no way he was going to have a defense for this. His his excuse to his but to my grandmother was he, st he to the day he died. Till he took his own life. He he stuck with that story. Somebody must have broken the house and did this. To, they set me up or something like. That. The evidence just didn't point to that. And based on the report yeah. after I read it, I mean, he's my uncle. I, I loved him with all my. But even I had to admit the evidence did not support that. Yeah. But he, but a black man in the state of Texas, he in the state, in this state in the state of Texas, because this he he knew he he must have felt that there was no he wasn't going to be able to say, you know, psych, you know, uh, uh, whatever her defense was, and, and he felt like he probably wasn't going to get that same kind of justice. He wasn't going to yeah. get that, and so he he took the way he took that way out. So that's why this one uh, uh, hit me because exactly what you just said. There are so many people in jail right now for life for way uh, for way less, and there are so many people in jail for the exact same thing: drinking and driving, things like that. It's mm -hmm. just it it just this one it just kind of just threw me for a loop. Um, but what do you? No, think? I agree. I just I I'm very uncomfortable with this outcome. Yeah. Really am. Yeah, I, I, as of as of I but only only because it sets that it sets people were saying. Um, and guys, let us, let us know in the, in the comments of, of what you guys are uh, thinking about this. Because people were saying a, a lot of those, those same things. Does this set a precedent? Can you now, especially with a drug like that, that has extressive, that's extremely used uh, in this country now, is now it's being legalized. And, and hey, at alcohol has been proven to have more, you know, the, the, oh. a, more detrimental effects to the, to the brain than, than, than marijuana. So, but now, oh, well, does this open a door, floodgate, of of, of people using this defense uh, now? Does it now? Will this defense work for, you know, how to, you know, especially now in my community, like, like, yeah, this defense ain't gonna work for a lot of people, you know, if you know what I'm I mean. I'm sorry, but if you take any sort of altering substance, otherwise, like things that are prescribed by a doctor, you're sort of relinquishing some, like responsibility for what reactions you might have mm -hmm. if you're if you're taking it for doctor's orders but if you are taking the risk of doing any drug you then should be responsible for the outcome of taking said right. drug right even even if peer pressure uh, was involved because at the end of the day it's i mean you, I mean, what, what, what's the other defense? You're gonna blame, you're gonna blame the vic, the, 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 the person who's dead. You're gonna blame, you're Look, gonna blame. It was, it was, he was the one who gave it to me, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I can come up with a scenario. I can come up with a scenario where somebody would be innocent. Yeah. And but it's going to come at the cost of another person. Right. And that's going to be, you know, someone's got like, if someone's forcing you to do drugs because that's a possibility, and we know that that's a possibility then yeah, the person forcing you is responsible, but there are always going to need to be people being held accountable, be it yourself or the person who's forcing you to do it for the outcome of taking said drug. That's outcome. just how it works. If that outcome happens to be negative. 100%, 100% we agreed. Remember to like this video, become a subscriber and share it. This really does help us out. If you would like to watch more from us from T3 Media Studio, click here or here. Thanks for watching.
Ah, oh, Scabby and NC17.